Uh, for the pears, I'm gonna squeeze out uh, some green in some more yellow tones. And a little bit of red in the umber as well. And so let's get, uh, I only have one green in my kit, but that's okay, because I have yellow and blue as well. So this is the phthalo green. I can get the lid open. Questions, comments, concerns? Thank you, Stephanie, for the thumbs up again. Uh, the yellow ochre, so the green, uh, phthalo green, yellow ochre. Uh, probably gonna need way more than that, but anyway. Uh, I'm going to use the cadmium yellow. In a lot of the kits, you'll have two different yellows, a lemon yellow and a cadmium yellow. One is more warm, I guess you would say, and this one's a little cooler. This is like for lemons, the, the lemon yellow. Uh, anyway, but I'm gonna use the cadmium. If your tubes, uh, if you can't get them open, uh, one trick to do is kind of hit the lid a little bit. Uh, I'm holding it firmly here and kind of just hitting the lid. And that can, it tends to break the, uh, the paint that kind of gets around it off. Or just use a pair of pliers. You can kind of hold it and get a pair of pliers and you can kind of wrench it off there. My head, I'm looking at areas that I want to change, but I'm just for time constraints, I'm gonna keep going. Keep rolling. Let's see, do I need a little bit? Yeah, a little bit of red. I'll show you the colors here in one second. A little bit of red. Um, I need more of the straight brown, the umber brown. A little more than I needed, but that's fine. And um, I can use this mixture here. So I just squeezed out some more colors there. Uh, red, yellow, yellow ochre, and the green, and then the brown is what I used. And so, once again, I go to the shadow sides first, and so I'm going to uh, work the shadows in, and then come back in with the highlights. So, um, so I'm just gonna dip into the green, and a little bit of the brown, a little bit of the red. Um, and so just on the one side again, I don't know if you can see that, it's on the one side. And I'm gonna start on my shadow sides. And so I'm gonna just kind of work the shadows and then I'll bring the highlights around just like we did on the, on the cone. At this point, you may wanna stop, like if you were working on this by yourself, you may let it stop, let it rest because you know you are fighting the wet surface and so you have to be careful where you're putting your hand and everything like that. And so just, uh, just be aware of that. Once again, I'm gonna get it real dark first and then I'll lighten it up. And so I need a little bit more oil to make it slide for me. Uh, you just don't want the edges to be too uh, uh, staticky or whiskery. And so I, I kind of really like to make sure I have nice smooth edges. And so push it into your background color. And um, make sure you cover all the white and don't leave little halo gaps as you go around. So right now I have a good amount of oil, a good amount of water. Um, and it's sliding on for me pretty well. I'll show you just in one second. So you can see that's kind of the green is going on right there. So I'm just gonna work that green around and then I wanna work the lighter stuff into it. You gotta establish the base first and so I'm just gonna work this around. Kinda looks like I'm an avocado right now. So if you were painting an avocado, that's kinda what you would do. And so what I wanna do now, I'm gonna go into the, the brown, a little bit of the red, and a little bit of my yellow. It gets kind of an orangey tone. Uh, and I, I wanna paint this little, the little tip area. There's a little kind of brownish tip right there. So I'm gonna kind of paint that right there. It may not get the color that I want right away, but I can always come back in. Um, it's kind of over here too. It's gonna work this in here. I kind of like this look and so I'm just gonna work it in. 
Now you could say, I, I can barely see that, you know, but I know I'm doing the dark now, and so I'll amp up the value, uh, lighter values here in just one second, and that'll start really bringing the, the, the pair to life. So I'm working the yellow in. I don't want to use a lot of white right now. Uh, I just really want to kind of stick with the yellow. So you can see I'm just kind of blending the paint, just like we did with the cone and the sphere, getting that yellow kind of mixed in there. At times you're gonna have kind of real brushy areas, but don't panic because you'll, you'll soften them down. And so once you get to a point, you'll start to lighten them, lighten them up. So I'm gonna use the ochre, the yellow ochre, the golden yellow now. Let's kind of add into it. The more colors you kind of put into it, uh, usually the better it's going to look. Put a little bit too light on that one side. I might have to bring that shadow back a little bit. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I was throwing it like that because it's so wet that I'm grabbing it just on the outside like that. So that's what I was doing there. Remember if the paint is a little, um, thick and it's not sliding for you, just put a little bit of oil or a little bit of the medium into it. It's a little more uh, bluish green over here, but I'm going to put this down just to kind of whip that side. And then um, I will I mean, one thing that, that uh, I always tell the students to, uh, they're not going to put the photo right next to your painting. And so if there's something that you like and you're like, oh, I like the pair like that. I'm just going to leave it like that. That's fine. I mean, they're not going to, I have students that will go, well, that doesn't look exactly like your photo. The thing is, you're just giving it a, an impression of that. So it's like a poem. You know, you don't like s tell somebody who you love, like every, th you know, every thousand things of why you care for that person. You just, you kind of allude to things. And that's that impressionist technique. And so we just want to allude to what your source is. Uh, I know you might say, you told us to look all this time and make sure. Well, we want this source to guide you there. And so use it as a guide, but as a point, at a point, you want to you know, use your eye to say, should I add more details to it? Should I add more value to it, lighten it, darken it? What is it that's going to make the painting look good? And so in this case, I'm going to add some white to it. I'm going to lighten this here. Then I'm going to add some more yellow to it. This is because in my source, it's really light in this one area. It's getting a little more greeny than I want, so I'll, I'll bring the yellow back into it. But once again, I'm, I'm trying to have my highlight side in my shadow side, ideally. Over here, it's actually, uh, oops, got some brown. Sometimes the green and the brown look alike, so be careful when you're dipping your brush in. I want to make this a little bit more green over here on the edge. In my head, I know that I'm working this all around. So that's why, you know, it's not a, you don't have to panic or anything like that. I'm going to clean my brush off, uh, just get the excess white off of it. And I'm going to go back in with my yellow. So just, uh, yellow with a yellow, little bit of the uh, medium to make it slurry a little bit more. So I'm just going to bring it back to the yellow side. It may get to a point here where, you know, I, it's going to be too, uh, the white will tint it out a little bit too much, but uh, just do your best. Uh, I want to amplify the shadow on that one side. So let me, uh, <laughs> if, you're, if you're looking at me and you're thinking I'm making strange faces at it, remember the close one eye and squint the other eye. That's what I'm looking at value. And so when I'm looking at this, I'm trying to see the value of what, I, what I've got there. And so I can see uh, I need to adjust it a little bit. So that's what I was looking at. So I'm gonna bring the shadow kind of back just a little bit, just transition it a little bit more. And I'm looking at my photo here and I can see the shadow comes down here really strong. If 
I want to have that bluish green down here just a little bit. We probably need to desaturate it a little bit, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of red in this area just to kind of gray out the green just a little bit. And that'll get a little bit more lifelike. If, you're, if your green is too strong, it's normally because it just needs a touch of red just to kind of bring it down or gray it out just a little bit. A little strong on the edge, so I'm gonna see if I can bring that edge down. Let's see, it comes around here a little bit. And then there's a little highlight that kind of comes in there. And then the shadow comes around this way a little bit. And then the shadow comes back uh, on the other side. So I wish I had sent this out to y'all so y'all could have that in. But anyway, the things we think of after we do this. But, uh, let me bring a little bit more shadow on this side. We add a little bit more red to gray it out a bit. Just a touch, just a touch. You can see that was a little strong. I did that a little bit on purpose to kind of show you that it's not that big of a deal. Gets down in here. Just kind of work it around. I'm gonna clean off the excess red. Touch a little bit of the ochre and a little bit of the green. And kind of go back into that. So I'm just gonna shimmy it in here. Take a little bit more of the darker green. Okay, so I can. Once again, it's that accordion technique, just kind of going back and forth, going back and forth until uh, you're happy with, with what you've achieved. And so just take your time, it's not a race. You know, you're not trying to, you know, 20 minute program and knock it out, you know? And so it's just kind of, um, so taking your time and seeing what you can do. Ding dong. And two, don't be overly obsessed with the details. You'll have some students um, in the, uh, the source image here, there's a lot of little dots. Uh, and, uh, and so you, you could obsessively, once it's dry, go in with a little small brush and add the little brown dots and things like that. Right now, we're just kind of getting it established. And so, that's what I'm working on now. There's a little bit of a line. I'm gonna to try to soften that line just a little bit. Sorry that you can't see. Um, really wanna brighten it up a little bit more. Let's see. I'm gonna clean off my brush completely. So I'm going into the water, rinsing it off, I'm trying to wipe off all the excess paint. And then uh, I'm gonna to try to grab just straight yellow just straight yellow. Let me see if I can brighten this one little area up. See, it goes there, it's really strong there. And it kind of gets a little thin there. And then the shadow stays there. Uh, it kind of comes up here just a little bit. Uh, there's a little bit of a dark there, then the brighter yellow is here down this way a little bit. So you can see, I'm just trying to look at my source and it's basically, you know, you're, you're trying to be like a scientist. And so I was trying to show that bright yellow that's there in the middle of that pair is what I was trying to do. And so um, anyway, so that's kind of what I'm trying to achieve there. And the thing is, this is the first shot at it. And so, um, you know, once it dries, you can always go back. I can see I need to pull more of the, the lighter yellow down into this area. So I'm just gonna, I'm just lightly, like that's that touching the top of a baby's head kind of analogy. Just lightly tapping this, this yellow that I have on this brush. And sooner or later, the, um, the darker green's gonna overwhelm it. So when that darker green starts to get on your brush and overpower the yellow, just wipe off the excess and reload your brush. That's one of the things students will tend to forget to do. Uh, they just kind of keep, you know, brushing it and it all kind of becomes muddy. And so, um, anyway, so I'm just gonna tap with this yellow uh, into this one area because on, on my photo source, the highlight uh, is really warm all the way into this one area right here. So I'm just tapping that in there. Um, I guess I need to do the stem as well. I guess it, I need to soften this right here. So let me just lightly kind of 
blend this stuff together so it's not so severe. One of the things I need to do too is the bottom here. Let me get a super dark. So I'm gonna take the green, the straight green, and some of the red, and mix that together. And I wanna do a shadow. Let me see if I can show y'all. It'll catch on this thing, but it'll see. It's like layer, dog. Let's no. see. I wanna bring it down here. The paint kind of went with it there. Kind of gotten to the point where um, there's not much I can do in this one because it's so wet. So I'm just adjusting the bottom. and just fan it into the front there. Come out hat and see that one little area needs to be adjusted, let's see. I'm just lightly, lightly, lightly skimming there. Does that look okay? Is that okay, the transition? Nicole, thank you. Stephanie, I don't know if I need clapping, but uh, not too bad for a little bit of work there. Anyway, I will, um, let me do the stem, and then, um, uh, thank you, Leslie, and then um, I probably, let's see, stem does come at a weird angle. Let me uh, see if I have a thinner brush. Uh, if you don't have a thinner brush, um, you can put the, uh, the stem in thicker, and then all you just do is readjust the background to it. So let's see what I'm, I'm just gonna take the brown right now with a little bit of the red, um, the, some of the medium. And I'm using this smaller brush here. If you're in the studio, you're, you're always welcome to borrow my brushes that I have here for everybody. Uh, but uh, anyway, so let me see about, let's see, it kind of starts here. I'm just gonna tap in the dark and then go out with it. And the thing is, if you make it too thick, it's not that big of a deal because you can always um, just adjust it uh, with the background, whatever the background is. I always like to give a little bit of a highlight to my shapes. So I'm gonna take a yellow, little bit of the yellow ochre. And so right now I just have dipped my brush into the yellow ochre. So I wanna give just a highlight on this one side, just so it makes it look three dimensional. And then what I'll do is I will adjust the gray. So this is what I have right now for the stem and I can, the background needs to be adjusted. And so I'm gonna bring that, um, the, the color of the background around the shape. So let me clean off this brush here. Now I'm gonna put it in the water. So I'm trying to get all the excess paint, all the green paint and everything off of it right now. Occasionally you have to just go over and rinse off your brushes and clean them out. And then, um, I'm gonna take that background gray tone. So that's one reason you don't get rid of your palette. Make sure you kind of keep the colors that you've been using so that you can readjust shapes as, as need be. And for the most part, I think this is gonna be kind of close. a little bit more yellow. So 
So that was the top side. I kind of like that more of that yellow tinge in there. That's really nice. See, that was a happy accident. I wasn't planning on that, but that's kind of nice. Oops. So that was the one side. Now I'll get the bottom side. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm just using that background color to readjust the shape. So I'm just barely touching the surface to kind of blend those colors together. I have a glare so I can't see. I need to lift it up just for a second. And I'm actually readjusting the pair just a little bit here as well. I'm gonna add, um, so this is what I have right now, and I'm just gonna add a little bit more yellow tinge to it just to brighten it up just a little bit. Let's see. So I'm just gonna take a little bit for the background, just a little bit of my yellow. I just, my eyes telling me that it, it looks good when it's a little bit warmer. So I'm just working a little bit of that yellow and I'll put a little bit of the white into this one area just to warm it up visually. And a little bit of white, just to lighten it. Just a little bit. Oops, that was, that was way too much white, but I will blend that in right there in the background. That happens all the time. It, I mean, if you watched when we were watching Yarnell, the, the guy that was painting when I showed you in class, uh, there were several times that he kind of a little bit messed up, but you don't panic, you just kind of go with it. It's like when you're walking and you trip in front of people, you just kind of, oh, I, I intended that, and just kind of keep going with it. And it may be something that you thought looked great, and then when you get done with it, you're like, oh, I should have done something else. But let me adjust this one little spot here. Come on. Didn't want to lose that one little area, and I kind of blended it out a little bit more than I wanted to. I like that darker gray there. I don't want to lose that. Sorry, I'm not showing right now. You see, I'm just really looking at what I'm doing and I'm just trying to decide if I like the marks that I'm making. And uh, I like this darker gray that's on this one side. And so I may try to bring that darker gray back just a little bit. You can see I kind of got a little bit into my pear shape and that's not a big deal. I'll just bring that back a little bit. And so that's that accordion technique that I referenced where you just kind of go back and forth and back and forth until you get to a kind of a uh, color or shape that you, that you like. Let me just do this one thing here. I'll leave it like that for now. And uh, let me just readjust where I got outside my shape, uh, or when I, where I went inside my shape. Yarnell did the same thing on the, um, uh, on the video we watched. Remember, he accidentally cut in into his um, uh, bottle, his wine bottle, just a little bit. Let's see, what color is that should be? That should be a little bit of the shadow. So let's get a little bit of a shadow color here. And then just slightly readjust this one little area here. So 
Sometimes it's just a light little touch, a light little stroke that's gonna get the, the shape where you want it to be. Um, Making a little bit of a, a slurry of the ochery greenish tone just to kind of give me a shape on this one side. I need to go back with the green now. I can tell that it made a little bit too brown on that one side. But that's what's going to happen. You just kind of keep going back and forth and back and forth until, um, until you're happy with what you got. And just trust your eye. Your eye is going to tell you, like right there, my eye told me that the shadow wasn't right, and so I was adjusting the shadow on the bottom. That's what I'm hoping for as y'all are working. So uh, uh, anyway, and basically you would just keep doing the same thing. You just paint the other two just like that. I mean, in my case, because I have the three there. But uh, that's what you do. Uh, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to kind of create that, that nice value kind of push and pull uh, kind of perspective space that you have as well. And so uh, I'm unhappy with this one little spot here. So um, uh, that's all I have for you. I might keep painting here just for a little bit longer. So if you want to see me, you can do that. But if not, uh, and respond to you. Everybody that sent me a photo, I edited them and sent them back to you. So if you haven't sent me your uh, photo yet, uh, be sure to send me a source photo. Um, if you're having problems on the other project, just let me know and I, I can help you, of course. Um, uh, and uh, aside from that, I just want to fix that shape. Uh, but um, just remember, nothing is one color, so we don't want it to be just you know yellow or you know or you know gray in the background and stuff like that. So try to explore that value contrast and just kind of see what you can do and achieve. Is that okay? I was waiting for something like yay. Ah, uh, thank you, Uh Anyway. If you're in the studio, we would be painting and we could be showing you and stuff like that, but uh, just do your best and see what you can do. And then uh, send me photos and we can talk about it. Sometimes too, if you're having problems, you could videotape it. Sometimes I can see more detail when you do that. You could show me what your, is on your palette and then kind of what the painting is doing. And then usually with that, I can give you advice as to how to adjust what you, what's maybe not going exactly the way that you want it to go. So. Uh, remember the oil paint you can see here, it gets kind of all over the place. So I'm gonna have to clean up uh, the table and stuff like that. Just be aware of that. So that's one reason I like working on the cardboard because it, you know, it tends to kind of keep things cleaner. In the studio, we actually have easels and so that's a little bit different. Uh, but if you uh, have your palette, kind of make sure you have something underneath it so it doesn't get all over your tabletop or your floor. I've had a couple students who uh, accidentally ruined their carpet in their dormitory and so, um, you know, don't blame me, I'm warning you, please keep stuff underneath it. Uh, for the most part, this stuff washes out with just warm soapy water. So if you have warm Dawn soap, uh, even if you get it on most stuff, it will come out just with some effort. Uh, and so uh, just be aware of that if it gets on your clothes and stuff like that. So it's not that big of a deal. With the acrylic paint, uh, it dries within about five, 10 minutes and that's the bigger concern. But with the oil paint, uh, just warm soapy Dawn water and that should take the majority of it out. Uh, if not, maybe you could mix the color and, and hide it wherever if it was like a blue shirt, you could just you know cover it back up. Any questions, comments, concerns? Does it look really easy, right? It should look easy for everybody, no? Uh, the video, uh, I'll post this one probably Friday or Saturday. Uh, it just takes me a little time to edit the two clips together and everything like that. If you haven't watched the ones that I posted, you kind of see how it goes. Uh, but um, uh, in the video, you'll kind of see closer some of the paint that I'm mixing and everything like that. Um, I was gonna say, oh, the, the tracing thing, I, there's another video posted on how to trace. So if you, if you came in late today, uh, I showed everybody how to trace to, to how to trace your shapes on. And the thing is, if, it, if you get frustrated, just take a break. Drink some coffee, get half the tea, or eat a candy bar, chill out a little bit, and then just come back to it. Because it will get frustrating uh, as, you're, as you're working, and the thing is just to keep kind of that peaceful mind. Uh, and when it does get frustrating, just stop. Sometimes the term we use is the painting gods sometimes uh, go against you. And so you just gotta be like, well, right now it's not my time, and let me just take a break. And a lot of times when you come back to it, you can see maybe what you were doing wrong, 
and you can make it better after that. It's like writing a paper. Sometimes when you're forcing a paper, uh, you know, it's better to let that paper rest a little bit and then you come back and you're like, oh, I should have restructured this or added this argument here. And the same thing with painting. It'll get frustrating. Just be patient and you should have uh, a good painting in the end if you just, you know, take the time, let it all happen. But that's all I have. I don't see any chats or anything like that, but I will say goodbye to y'all and um, hopefully everybody's well and doing well. And then I'm gonna go wash my hands and uh, might finish this as well. But uh, have a good night and then I'll see you.